so now at this point, all we have to do is to solve this differential equation. And then once we solve this differential equation, once we find what h of y should be, we can just substitute it back into this expression here to obtain xi of y. And now we're going to focus on finding solutions that come in the form of an infinite series. So you have a constant plus a constant times y plus a constant times y squared and so on. And it is perfectly valid for us to focus on the solutions that come in the form of an infinite series like this because all we're doing is that we're applying Taylor series and it's pretty reasonable for us to assume that h of y would come in the form of a well-behaved function and if h of y is well-behaved then because of a Taylor series we can express this function in the form of an infinite series so it is perfectly valid for us to look for solutions that come in this form and an alternative way to express this infinite series would be to write it out using this summation symbol. So this is what we're going to look for. So in order to find h of y, we're going to have to determine what these constants a uh, sub j should be. And we can deduce what these constants should be by substituting this expression back into this differential equation to see if we can deduce what these constants should be. So in order to do that, we're going to have to find h prime of y and h double prime of y. So for h prime of y, all we get is this is going to be equal to 0. This is going to be a1 plus 2a2y plus 3a3y square and so on. So this is just basic differentiation. And for the sake of convenience, we can also express this using an uh, the new summation symbol. And then you might be wondering why I'm retaining that j equal to 0 term, because the 0 just going to attach itself to this point over here, and then the whole thing is just going to be equal to 0. So it seems kind of redundant for me to retain the j equal to 0, but later on you'll see why this is going to be useful. The reason is pretty technical because it is going to be mathematically useful later on, so just keep that in mind for now. So to find a second derivative, we just differentiate this expression again. So we get 2a2 plus 3 times 2a3y and so on. So you can work out the later terms and the next one should be 4 times 3 times a4 times y square and so on. And once again, you can express this using an, a, a summation symbol. So this is just going to be j plus 1, j plus 2, a j plus 2, y to the power of j. So you can just try substituting the numbers in and you see that this can perfectly recreate this infinite series over here. So now all we have to do is just to substitute these uh, terms back into this differential equation. So h double prime of y, this is going to become, so this is pretty much just copying at this point. We just dump this expression back into the differential equation. And then we have minus 2y h prime of y. And then h prime of y is equal to this expression here. So j, a j, y, j minus 1. And then we have plus k minus 1 h of y and if h of y is just equal to this so we can just dump that as, as, as well a j y to the power of j equal to 0 so the right hand side is equal to 0 and I can just absorb this y term inside into the summation symbol so I can just take this inside so I can just get rid of this minus 1 so now you see that all these terms the summation symbols are all the same. They all start from equal, uh, they all start from zero to infinity, so, uh, and each of these terms they are attached with a y to the power of j. So now I can combine these three summation signs together. So you see why I, I retained the j equal to zero over here. It's because I want to combine them later on. So now you see that because of these observations over here, because these summation signs are identical, I can just combine everything together. And because each of these terms they are attached with a y to the power of j term, I can just group all the coefficients together like this. So put k minus 1 a j, and then I can put the y to the power of j on the outside. So this is going to be equal to 0. So if we want this expression to be true, if we want this left hand side to be equal to 0 for whatever values of y, it has to be the case that these coefficients, they must all be equal to 0. So that means j plus 1, j 
j plus 2 a j plus 2 minus j so this is just copying out the coefficient so this expression here must be equal to 0 so if this is true then this express so if this is true then this expression here will be true for all values of y so th this is how we can deduce this relationship here and now you see we, th we can actually uh, obtain a recursion formula for these constants a sub j over here so with a bit of rearranging you see that a j plus 2 is just equal to 2 j plus 1 minus k so you see that I'm just grouping the a j terms together I'm just dumping them over to the right hand side here 2 j plus 1 minus k so times a j divided by th these terms here that are attached to the a j plus 2 so we have j plus 1, j plus 2. So now this is a very important result. We have obtained a recursion formula that would allow us to find what these constants a sub j should be.